Hi, my name's Lisa. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I get asked a lot of careers advice and the main thing people are nervous about when looking to get a job in conservation is the lack of money. And it is a concern for a lot of people. But there's a lot of research out there which suggests that money is not the most important thing in your job satisfaction. There are things that are much, much higher up on the list. So what are these things? Lions roaring in the morning sun Searching for a longer day Traditionally, motivation in jobs is based on the carrot and stick reward system. So you do something good, you get a bonus or you get a pay rise. It's extrinsic, it's external factors. But more and more research is telling us that money isn't as important as we think it is. Not only is it not at the top of the list for a lot of people, it's actually number six or number seven often in a 10 item list. And I'm not saying money isn't important. If you don't have enough money, to feed your family, to survive, then that's obviously a huge concern, but the point is that it's not a key driver of motivation. In fact, research has suggested that there's a less than 2% correlation between your level of pay and your job satisfaction. And even in some aspects, it becomes a demotivator. Bonuses, for example, they focus so much on that monetary reward that their kind of overall enjoyment of their job decreases and their creativity decreases. And it actually can promote kind of dishonest behavior because if all you want to do is get the reward then you're going to go the quickest way possible to exploit an incentive based system. Additionally studies have shown that when a task uses even a little bit of cognitive skill which most jobs in conservation do higher pay actually led to poorer performance. It's crazy. So if money isn't important what is and can you find it in conservation? In his book Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us, Daniel Pink discusses intrinsic or internal motivators. This is your sense of accomplishment, your pride, your purpose, your belonging. It's the desire to do something for your internal satisfaction. So my daughter, I don't pay her to play with her toys, her just curiosity and, and happiness playing with them just keeps her playing with them. So Daniel talks about the three most important motivators in your job. These are autonomy, mastery and purpose. So autonomy is really the desire to, I want to say the, be the captain of your own ship. <laughs> it's to be like an active decision maker, not just a passive robot in your job just being told what to do for every little task. So Daniel says that when people are given the freedom over the four T's, which are time, team, technique, and tasks, amazing things can happen. In conservation, especially time is a much easier win than money. It's no secret that there's not enough money to go around, but if you are kind of impressive in your job and your manager wants to reward you in some way, time is often much easier to give than a pay rise. Also tasks, the nature of conservation work, because a lot of it is through individual grants, uh, there's a lot more freedom to kind of push for what you're interested in. Um, it gives a lot more flexibility, I think, to really drive forward something that you are interested in. Obviously, as long as the main objectives of the department or program or organization are met, you can have a lot more freedom in what you do. Autonomy is basically the opposite of being micromanaged. And it obviously can vary depending on where you are up in the organization or in your career path. I had situations where I was paid very low and had a lot of autonomy, but it, it was too low to not be a worry. Um, so that, that was in the very early days. Um, it got a lot better. The time that I was at my lowest is actually when my income was the most that it's been. Um, and that's because my role was a lot more rigid um, and I had a lot less say over what I did and when. <sighs> it makes me even nervous <laughs> talking about it. Whereas now I, I'm, I'm part-time so I make less money and I've got more control over what I do in that time. and. It actually means I'm hugely enjoying my job more in the last couple of years um, because I can really go for what I 
am interested in but what I know will be beneficial for my program and my organization. So autonomy doesn't mean like you can do anything that you want, it just means that you <laughs> you can make choices within the boundaries of your kind of strategic plan or your organizational objectives but it's kind of self-given goals if that makes sense like you're doing something because you see the value in it but the degree of autonomy can vary depending on how long you've worked in the organization or in the field um, it can be just kind of having more control or input of what tasks you get involved in um, or it could be more control over where you work or when you work. So self-chosen goals are kind of the key in why autonomy makes you happy. Obviously that has to be within a framework, you can't just be like dropped in the ocean and told to make a plan of what you want to do. It's, it's knowing what the kind of the North Star is but like figuring out yourself how to get there. So it's about setting clear goals for yourself in the direction that you want to go to. And there is such a huge, huge potential for this in conservation roles. You, there are so, conservation is such a rapidly growing field with new findings in technology and research. It means there's, there's place for everyone to kind of grow and push. Um, and it's trying to find your kind of, your area or your niche and pushing into that. So for me, I have found that conservation behavior is my niche and that's where I'm kind of really pushing myself towards, even though no one's telling me to, it's not, it's not my line manager who's been telling me to, to go for that and to apply grants for it. Um, but it does fall massively within our overall um, organizational objectives. So people are happy for me to, to push towards it. So it's just trying to go in the area that you want to be in and, and master that area. Feel like you have really achieved something. And the last one is purpose. You're working for a common purpose or a higher purpose and you know clearly what that is. Uh, and this is why you see some of the world's most skilled and qualified and could be paid very highly, um, you know, working in remote locations for next to nothing. It's how organizations like Doctors Without Borders even exist is because people are looking for that purpose. You really see this in conservation a lot and the organization I work for, you really are very clear on what the overall kind of mission of the organization is and within your kind of program, what your kind of objectives are. And many different levels are often kind of invited into strategic meetings, have input on your kind of yearly work plans or five year work plans and it's to make people understand no matter what level they are, that every job that they do feeds into that common higher purpose. And you understand the, the clear impact that your work can have. And I think when I compare myself to friends that make more money than me, or family that make more money than me, um, I'm actually talking about my husband, um, the nature of our jobs are slightly different and I have a lot more freedom because I don't have as many responsibilities as him. He's got a lot of people management, facility management, elephant management. He'd have things that he has to, he has to do no matter what. And while I do have a certain amount of people management, I do have a, a, a lot of kind of freedom because there's so many things that need, to, it's overwhelming actually, because there's so many things that need to be done um, and trying to get a team together to do them all. But it means there's, there's just a lot of potential and opportunity. And I think that's the, the key difference. Even though he earns more than me, I am definitely way more satisfied with my job than he is with his. So the next video I probably should do 
should be looking at ways to um, get more <laughs> autonomy and mastery and purpose within your role, no matter what you are in, no matter what kind of situation you are in. And there are so many examples, um, and I'll link some below, um, some summaries of them, but there's so many examples of organizations that have thrived because they've kind of changed the way they think about motivation. They've moved away from the carrot and stick method and they've given people kind of more freedom to basically create great things. So Google, for example, Gmail and Google Maps, they weren't on any kind of list of tasks to do. They were workers that decided to work on something in their free time and push it. And you've got organizations that give, you know, like 10%, 20% of their staff's time a week to focus on goals that they're interested in. And I mean, that can be a bit of a risk because it's obviously it's salary time, but I know people that have definitely myself included sometimes, but I, I've definitely try and make it up normally at like midnight or something, but you kind of, you know, zone out for a little while. And if you, if you knew that you had a certain portion of time a week that you could really focus on something you're interested in, you know, again, within the overall objectives of the organization, then yeah, I just, I think it, it's worth thinking about. It's definitely worth thinking about. I think even post-it notes were invented as a kind of side thing. <laughs> so in conclusion, I'm not saying that money isn't important and I'm not saying that it's okay to not pay conservationists any decent money. Um, all I'm saying is that if you can get a job which takes care of your kind of your basic needs, not to worry too much if you're not gonna earn an absolute fortune because there, there are more important things that conservation can definitely give you. There's autonomy, there's mastery, and there's purpose. And if you wanna know how to get these things, then stay tuned to my next video.